If we knew where we stood, we didn't all take the same stand, of course. Some marched with Peter Hayne in the 60s and early 70s to stop the Springbok tour. Others clung to the innocent ideal that politics had no place in sport. Some felt it was either futile or frivolous to make a mere rugby pitch into an ideological battleground. But few stood on the sidelines then. A generation on, the generation of protest may still scour the supermarket shelves for a non-South African avocado pear, but the passions are duller now. Anyway, sport, and sport was what it was all about, wasn't it? Sport in South Africa has changed over the years. South African-born journalist Paul Martin has no great reason to be fair to the country of his birth. He was branded as a dissident. The authorities wouldn't even let him home to see his dying father. But he gives South Africa credit for racial progress in sport, where credit he feels is due. I think they've taken major steps, particularly when you consider that the South African regime, six or seven or eight, even ten years ago, was totally against the idea of racial mixing. One prime minister said that there would only be a black man in a Springbok jersey over his dead body. He did die, actually, last year. And there are black men in Springbok jerseys. There are also black men playing at provincial level. There are black clubs playing against white clubs. What there isn't at the moment in rugby is enough integration at schools level, only on a very peripheral level when you talk about schools. There's also separate racial structures uh, for blacks, coloreds, and whites, although there's a lot of mixing taking place between them. So the last vestiges of apartheid have not yet been removed from rugby. <laughs> South Africa reacted to its sporting isolation from the world by changing the public complexion of its sport and challenging the world to acknowledge its giant stride towards normality. Out come the Bucks, and it's a big moment for Errol Tobias. To dedicated opponents of apartheid, the tactic gloriously misses the point. Sport was never the issue, merely the symbol. The real problem was the racialist state the sportsman, black or white, represented. Errol Tobias adds to his international points tally. Hypocrisy and humbug, says South Africa. It was white sport you attacked and mixed sport we gave you. What more do you want? I don't like apartheid. I don't like, but you must give me one particular field in life where the, it does not exist. You had your old school tie, uh, and you know you were better off when you had it than uh, you are today. But the fact of the matter is, you had it, you've got the caste system in England, you've got everywhere you can pick your own friends, uh, you depend, depends on, on your standing in society, uh, everywhere you go. You will find differences. Well, now some call it discrimination, uh, but discrimination is there. It's among birds, it's among animals, it's everywhere. Even Hitler, who was called mad by, by Churchill, even Hitler knew that when they, the, the birds uh, uh, fed together, when they went home, everyone to his own twig. The South African government would like to see sport and apartheid left perched on their separate twigs. But sport only became an issue because of the nature of South African society. Integrated sport, some argue, is the weapon that will destroy apartheid. For abnormal sport is an artificial absurdity in a society so manifestly abnormal. Paul Martin acknowledges both arguments.